Monday, March 11th, 2024. I'm sure you've heard the news, you've seen the articles, you've seen the videos on YouTube, on Kitco, CNBC, so on and so forth, that Monday, March 11th, the market cap for Bitcoin surpassed that of silver. Now you're like, why would I watch this video? Because I've already heard all this. Well, I wanna tell you a little bit of a different perspective here. And no, it's not necessarily good for the market cap of silver. In fact, I'm gonna show you today why I believe that maybe Bitcoin surpassed silver a little bit earlier than everybody thinks. We'll start by taking a look at the chart here. This is the one that was shown on Twitter, uh, but you can see this is from company rankings and it shows the total assets by market cap. Now, of course, gold is way up there, uh, you know, surpassing probably the, you know, the next seven or eight combined, maybe more, I don't know, I'd have to do the math. But if you take a look at this chart here, you can see Bitcoin is sitting at 1.407 trillion. Silver is at 1.370 trillion. But the question is, how did they get that number? How did they get this number for silver's market cap? Well, let's take a look at what they say. So if we look right here and I'll highlight it for you, it says this value was obtained by multiplying the current silver price, which is 2437 per ounce with the amount of silver that is estimated to have been mined so far. And that is the key word. In fact, they even say it right here. It is also noteworthy that a large quantity of silver has been lost and destroyed due to industrial applications. But how much of that silver is actually missing and how much is left? Well, if we take a look at this article on visualcapitalist.com and I'll put a link for it down below, we're gonna read this right here, but go read the entire thing if you're interested, it's pretty good. It says, although all silver ever mined can fit into a 52 meter cube, and I'm gonna highlight this for you, it says the vast majority has been consumed. While the actual amount is unknown, some experts believe as much as 90 to 95% of silver ever been mined has been lost to landfills. For this reason, there is likely less silver available above ground than gold. And then they put in parentheses, 98% of all gold is accounted for today. 90 to 95% seems pretty extreme. Granted, I don't know any better than they do probably, but just to me, that seems a little bit high. But let's just assume it's 50% loss. How would that actually work? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is get the price of silver because we're gonna need that to do our math. Now, as you can see, silver is down a little bit today as I record this video on March 12th. But you can see it is trading right now at 2439. And I do apologize about today's silver price drop. That is my fault because I bought silver yesterday. So now that we have the spot price for silver, I made this little spreadsheet that we can kind of plug it into and it's gonna do some math for us. Now, this isn't a very special spreadsheet. It took like five seconds to put together. So I'm not making it available for download or anything, but I love to look at the numbers. And speaking of numbers, by the way, do me a favor and make sure you are subscribed. I've been getting comments from people saying they are unsubscribed from the channel for some reason. So go down below and make sure, and if you're not subscribed yet, do so because it really helps me out and I really appreciate it. So as you can see on line three here on B3, we have our total mined ounces, or I'm sorry, tons of silver ever throughout the history of earth, at least estimated, which is 1.715 million. Now, if you multiply that by 32 something thousand, I put the math in here, that comes out to about 56.296 billion Troy ounces of silver. So if we plug in 2439, times the amount of ounces that we have in silver, you can see our current market cap for silver is $1,373,000,000,000. That is currently below Bitcoin's 1.41. But what about the amount of silver that we've actually lost? So let's take a look at that. If we take the, let's just say that that report is correct and it's as high as 95% of silver has ever been lost throughout history you can see that the market cap for silver is under 100 billion. It's 0 0.6069 trillion, which is $69 billion worth of silver. Now, again, I think their estimates are way off. I doubt we've actually lost 95% of our silver. So let's go ahead and change it to say, well, they said 90% too, right? So at that point, you have 137 billion. Let's say it's 50%. Let's say we've only lost 50% of our silver. We're still at only $687 billion worth of silver. And keep in mind, the demand for silver is going to be pushed against what is currently available. So all of that silver lost really doesn't, shouldn't affect the market cap because it's not even available. It doesn't exist any longer. Now you might be thinking at this point that I'm being negative towards silver, which is odd because my channel name is Silver Seeker. That's not the case at all. I actually love silver. I think it's undervalued. I joked earlier that the reason the price dropped today is because I bought silver yesterday. You're welcome, by the way, if you want to buy the dip. Uh, obviously that's not how it works. My little transaction does not affect the market. But my point is, is that 
you know, the price of silver, whenever we're looking at the market cap for silver and how much all this, how much the silver out there is worth, we really shouldn't be looking at everything because so much of it has been lost in time. Now there is another side of the token though. We do have a lot of silver left to mine. According to the USGS, the US Geological Survey, I should say, there is still 530,000 tons of silver left to be mined on earth estimated of course so that's a lot more to add to the equation but if we take into account that extra 530,000 tons that means the all-time market cap for all the silver ever mined actually comes out to not even two trillion dollars it doesn't even get close to uh, what the gold price you know the gold's market cap is i mean the thing is is if silver were to really reach that market cap of gold even if you were to account for the silver that's still left to mine you would really need to silver silver would need to be like 200 dollars it would literally take us mining all of the rest of the silver that's still in the ground, right? And not having lost any of our silver at all and silver being $200 an ounce to reach the market cap of gold at 14, you know, over $14 trillion. And right here, this adjusted market cap, if you're wondering what that is, that's accounting and lost. So let's say that we are never gonna lose another ounce of silver throughout history. We've only lost 20% and that's it. So that 530,000 uh, tons is added and we have a total market cap after the loss of 12.41 trillion. So at that point, you would really need to get like to what, $240 or so per ounce to reach the market cap of gold with silver. Another thing to consider is what the highest market cap for silver was, at least in the last couple of decades. We can go back to 2011 when silver spiked to around $45 an ounce. In fact, we can take a look and see by looking at the pricing chart here on SD Bullion that it peaked to $47.34 per ounce on Monday, April 25th of 2011. So if we take that 4734 and plug it into our spreadsheet and hit enter, you can see that at that point, the market cap for silver would have been around $2.6 trillion, which is not quite double what Bitcoin is today, but still pretty close. And even if we account for a 35% loss, that's still 1.73 trillion, even 50% puts it at around 1.33 trillion today. So the last question I wanna share with you, and I think this is kind of a cool one to look at, is what would the silver price have to be to maintain the current market cap for silver while accounting for the amount of silver that no longer exists, whether lost to landfill or to time or whatever? And I went ahead and unhid this row right here to show you. This is a very fun one to take a look at. So right now, as you guys know, $1.37 trillion market cap, which bought price at 2439, accounting for 1.751 million tons of silver ever mined. That means right now, if we never lost any, then the price to maintain that market cap would be 24.39 per ounce. Well, let's say we've lost over time 20%. Well, let's do it. So if we actually have lost 20% of all the silver ever mined through time, meaning there is still 80% available out there, the spot price would actually need to come out to $30.49 per ounce to maintain that loss. But what if the article that we read earlier is correct and we've lost 90 or even 95% of our silver? Take a look at this. If we've lost 90% of our silver over time, that means for silver to actually maintain today's market cap, we would need it to be $243.89 an ounce to maintain that market cap. And if we lost 95%, $487 an ounce. Now, of course, I don't believe we've lost this much. I'm not saying that we've only lost 20%. The truth is, I don't know. It just seems to me that that estimate is kind of high. Let's say we lost 99.9% .9 of it. We would need silver to be $24,388 an ounce. And that is rounding up. We could actually put a hundred in here and you can see it can't actually do the math. But let's just say 35%, even if we've only lost 35% of our silver, our price to maintain at that market cap would have to be $37.52. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably wondering at this far into the video, why does this even matter? I mean, we don't have any effect over the spot price. It's going to be controlled by the paper markets and by manipulation, just like it has been for decades. I get what you're saying. It's just that for me, I really like to look at an unbiased, unhyped view of what's going on with silver. This doesn't mean that I don't believe in silver. I personally think silver is incredibly undervalued. We talked about this so many times on the channel. I just believe that you should at least know all of the data and not just be hyped into, oh my God, silver is going to be $10,000 an ounce tomorrow and you better buy it now or you're going to be poor. I can't do that. I don't look at silver that way. And so for that reason, I don't spread that kind of information on this channel. I might tell you that I believe it's undervalued, but I'm not going to tell you that I think it should be $1,000 an ounce because I don't. Uh, you know, I think silver today should be in the 30s, maybe even the $40 an ounce range, but I don't think silver should be anywhere near the $1,000 an ounce that a lot of people say it should. But I could be wrong. So if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. Let me know in the comments below 
and tell me you disagree with me. Just do it in a respectful manner because we all learn from each other. We just don't learn from insulting each other. You know what I mean? So leave the comment down below and let me know what you think, but make it tasteful and I will do my best to respond. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit. If you haven't seen it yet, check out this video right here, which is also a great one where I talked with Josh from Minite Coin and Bullion about gold hitting an all-time high and causing people to sell it. What do you think? Guys, thanks again. We will see you next time and have a great rest of your day.